Hello, everyone. I'm Jane Rachel, and I'm here today with Chloe Shahoff, who is a high school junior who has already dealt with quite a bit, starting if at age nine, severe scoliosis, and now is a teenager dealing with autoimmune lupus. Chloe, thank you so much uh, for sharing your story. I know you've, you've been through so much and you manage it so well, like academics, the social life, and this chronic illness. And I think it'd be very inspirational to the people who are watching this to see how you've overcome all of this. So maybe we can start with you just telling us, starting with a little bit about the scoliosis at age nine, what that was like. Yeah, so um, from a young age, I've had quite different health issues that were on and off. Um, but then at age nine, Actually, how this started was that I was getting dressed in the morning and my mom happened to be in my room and I bent over and she saw like a huge hump in my back. Wow. So, yeah, right away she booked an appointment with um, an orthopedic doctor and from the x-rays, um, I had already like a 70, 70 degree spinal curve. Wow, because I had slight scoliosis, but that's huge, 70 degrees. Yeah. Right? And it, it honestly seemed to came out of nowhere. I definitely grew tall really quickly. So that's where we thought it came from and everything. And that was quite a shock because I had dealt with a little bit, but nothing that would re require like any sort of major surgery type thing. So it definitely right away, I was like, shocked and confused and everything was it painful or yeah so honestly it's so crazy because at the at the time I thought everyone like had back pain you know what I mean I think that's what it's like when you kind of grow up being in chronic pain like you think it's normal and you don't know what's not normal type thing you know <laughs> Yeah. I just so relate to that because it's like if you especially I mean my pain started at age eight so if you've had it your whole life you feel like everybody has it yeah um, and you're like, what should I mention what should I not mention type thing yeah because exactly. yeah. you don't know you don't know what normal is or what your baseline is right you know? yeah and so when they ask how you're feeling today it's like you don't even know how to answer that question exactly, yeah. exactly. so what happened when they found out that you had that curvature so right away I me and my mom thought we were gonna we didn't know anything about scoliosis never mind severe scoliosis so we were thinking maybe bracing but then my doctor was like it's too severe and a brace won't help um so right away we scheduled my surgery for that summer like I was probably diagnosed in let's say like in the middle of that year like February type thing and then I would have my procedure in the summer um so yeah that was and then from then I just got monitored before surgery and it kept on progressing yeah and then yeah surgery was a lot mm -hmm. I mean especially at such a young age like how yeah. long like did you miss school and how long did it take to recover and all of that Oh, wow. So the surgery itself was 10 hours long because I'm pretty much almost fused from my whole spine, except like a bit of my neck and my pelvis. Wow. Yeah. So it was 10 hours long. <laughs> and oh my I, gosh. yeah, I lost a lot of blood during that procedure. So I was having some complications, but luckily uh -huh. they were able to transfuse me with my own blood. So that was good. I didn't need like anyone else's blood. I was in the hospital after that for seven days, so a week. And it was honestly felt like relearning everything, like how to sit, how to walk, how to stand. Everything was different. You yeah. know? Yeah. I, I and can only, you know, as you're talking, I can only think about like your poor mother, because at least in the surgery, you were out, but she must have been a <laughs> nervous wreck, you know, your whole family yeah. for those. 10 hours you know just and being so young did you did you understand what was going on or oh no I mean I didn't even grasp it like I had no connection like either with what kind of is like surgery in general yeah you know what is normal like 
is all surgeries like 10 hours long. Like I was so young, I didn't quite understand, you know, am I gonna be in pain during the surgery? Yeah. My mom was like, no, you'll be knocked out. How, am I gonna dream, you know? Yeah. Didn't really understand it at all. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't even make sense for adults. So I can only imagine it nine, right? <laughs> So how um so how long after the surgery did did life go back to normal or was there still pain after that? Yeah, it took about a year to fully recover. And I did have to a lot of physical therapy, a lot, I did have a back brace after just to help me stabilize more. And I missed a lot of school. I missed like a majority of that year. And I did a lot of stuff online to make up for it. Just because it was hard. I struggled with a lot of um, back spasms after the surgery that would like mm -hmm. almost make walking like seemingly impossible. Oh, you wow. Know? And if that's the age, you know, where you're running around and you're playing tag and oh, it's, yeah. you know, so did, eventually did your life go back to normal, whatever normal is or after it's, that? Yeah, be like a new normal, I would say. Like everything was kind of different, not like it's weird because I would say everything was different because it made me grow up quicker. Like, you know what I mean? I felt like I went from like nine to 14 overnight, you know? So yeah. in that sense, it was different. And, um, you know, a lot of things were different. I, I used to be like more flexible as a kid and I lost like a lot of mobility in my spine from the fusion. So, you yeah. know, I had to like limit myself from doing certain things and, at such a young age, understand what limits are when it seems yes. like everyone's telling you, you can be whatever you want. No, I cannot be a gymnast. Yes. <laughs> you know, yes. Yes. I, you know, I'm struggling with that with that now, like this physical <laughs> limitations, like I, you know, that I can't keep up with my friends at, you know, at this is, you know, in later, you know, adulthood. So I just can't imagine that at nine. Before we talk about the, the lupus, just any advice to either anyone, parents, kids dealing with scoliosis or anything you wish people had done differently back then, or just, you know, any advice for anyone, even doctors going through that now? Yeah, I wish even at such a young age, it's hard. I wish I understood more what I was going into and the recovery time it takes and what being, getting to the point of fully recovered would take out of me, you know? And I kind of like, even it's hard because I know a lot of people don't want to fully explain to their kids what you're going to go through. But I feel like if I knew beforehand, I would have known more what to expect instead of thinking I'll be back on my feet after a month, you know, like just understanding what my new normal will be, you know, I feel like that would be helpful. Yeah, absolutely. And I think people try to shield kids from things, right. You know, what, whatever might be going on in the world, but they're smarter than we think. And the fact is, if you're going to have to deal with it, like, honest conversations of what you, you know, at whatever developmentally appropriate level, but honest conversations of what you're going through and what to expect. My guess is that your family didn't even know themselves what to expect, but the doctors, you know, have to be yeah. really careful to explain it in a way yeah. that you can understand. And I um, wish there was like even a way to like maybe take a class with other kids who were gonna undergo a spinal fusion or um, be able to get in contact with people who have recovered from a spinal fusion. Like, I feel like that would also be very helpful. Yeah, and that's, you know, with this, you know, this day of COVID where we're all home, it, it's just brought to light how much the internet could help. Because I feel like whatever condition you have, talking to someone who's been through it, you know, either talking to other moms whose kids have been through it has been is really helpful. And I, I feel like no matter what someone is going through, you can find someone else online or, or doctors, you know, can try to connect you with other patients or, you know, and maybe it's not exactly the same thing, but just other kids who are going through some sort of physical limitations. Did you feel like any of your friends or anyone were able to understand? Probably not, right? No. Yeah, I mean, yeah, even I had one of my close friends visit me in the hospital after, but it, she didn't quite understand even. So after surgery, I just had no appetite whatsoever for anything. 
and so I had like a you know like a massive headache and just you know and every little noise like even if you were like hi how was your day it was just like awful you know what I mean and so yeah but it's hard because like at that age how are you supposed to comfort your friend like you don't understand what's going on exactly you know, it's difficult it's it's funny, like even just, you know, I think we've only talked about 10 minutes so far, but I think that the advice already has been huge. If you can find, you know, if you're a parent, look for someone else who's gone through this and see, you know, like even if you were, you know, you could talk to a, if you were nine, someone who was like 12 or 13, who could just encourage you and, and let you know, look, it's going to be hard at first, but eventually things will get easier. Just knowing that is, you know, the more information at any age you have, I think the better. Yeah. Um, so let's switch a little bit because now you're also dealing with, with lupus. You had a few years there where life was pretty okay, pretty normal. And then what, then what happened? Yeah. So after I would say like after a year, after recovering from my fusion, life was, you know, my new normal, but it was good. I felt like more active and was getting back to my old kind of ways. Um, and that was the majority of middle school where I was all good. And then immediately when I went into high school, I got hit with such a bad wave of continuous joint pain. And it was everywhere. It was like my wrists, you know, my knuckles, the joints in my neck and like my pelvis joints, the SI joints. I mean, wow. it was, yeah, it just got hit with like that wave of pain. And did they have any idea what was causing it or what, or yeah. I mean, so went to doctors right away and. Yeah. So I also had like that typical kind of Malar rash, like the butterfly rash, which yeah. kind of, and me Those and my mom, yeah, went ahead and did our own research at first to know what kind of specialist to even go to. Um, and at first we went to my pediatrician, saw I was ANA positive, had high inflammation markers, and then she referred us to a rheumatologist. And then from, he did like further blood work and uh, formally diagnosed me with lupus then, since it was like pretty evident from everything going on. And oh God, that was even more confusing, I would say, than the spinal fusion. Just because oh, autoimmune conditions, like they can literally affect any part of your body, you know? So it was really hard. To, you know? and, and all of that, and you're a freshman in high school, because, you know, I, I'm dealing with all sorts of autoimmune diseases, but at least I'm an adult. Like, I just can't imagine trying to start high school. And a, yeah. yeah. Well, and it, so it sounds like they were able to get you the diagnosis right away, though, because you sometimes with autoimmune diseases, it takes a while. It takes a while. Yeah. It, yeah. So they just kind of, they wanted to make sure it wasn't like rheumatoid arthritis. And it was a little bit of a process of like trial and error to see what fits the best. But because I kind of had that more, I was lucky. I had more of the typical symptoms right away with the fatigue, the rash, you know, I was, uh, the joint pain, I was able to be diagnosed fairly quickly. And was there treatment that helps and how quickly did that work? Or is that all just trying and error up and down? Yeah, it was hard. I would say the only thing that helped, I would say it didn't really help like systemically in my body, but more so to like symptom wise was prednisone <laughs> and a lot of prednisone, you know, unfortunately, and that did, came with a lot of side effects, you yeah. know, like mood changes and hunger changes. So that itself was kind of difficult. Yeah, but I would say that was the only thing that really did help me. And you can't really stay on it for too right. long. Yeah. I was just going to say that I'm not a doctor, but I know enough to know that you can do prednisone for a while, but you can't stay that on That's that. Like periodically type thing. Yeah. yeah. And so now that, that was two years ago or so that you got first diagnosed. So how, I mean, are there flare ups? Are there ups and downs? Is it mostly stable? Um, yeah, definitely a lot of flare ups, but now... I like I'm more understanding of what causes me to go into a flare up like being I cannot be in the sun 
for too long with I have a lot of photo sensitivities so I have to make sure I wear my sunscreen you know not stay in the sun for too long or push myself which is a hard one I mean I love hiking like I love it so much you know you would have to stop me from going on like a a 12 mile hike like I would if I could but it's you know if I know I'm if I'm gonna do that I'm gonna pay for it you know so it's just kind of yeah understanding that and um i do have like a few more meds that kind of have worked a bit like gabapentin you know just for that kind of nerve pain and you know i've tried like methotrexate in the past it's worked a bit you know uh like meloxicam like non-steroidal anti-inflammatories you know, stuff like that. But also like, what else helps is like kind of stretching out my body every day, morning and night, you know. You do I, yoga or just like, just stretch, yeah, yoga. Yeah, kind of like a yoga kind of routine, you know, yeah. and it doesn't necessarily, it helps a little bit, like, you know, an hour or so and a bit of physical therapy, just stuff like that. And do you have a good team of doctors? Cause that's so important. Yeah, it was really hard, like, kind of finding that kind of team that doesn't, you know, kind of clash with me, if that makes sense. Oh, um, it, it was, does. Yeah. It does. <laughs> it was more about finding people who, like, are willing to try new things and not kind of tell me that this is the way it's going to be and you have to accept it you know and or that and not like um you know kind of telling me I need to go to talk therapy to talk out my pain and better cope with it and if I better cope with it my pain will be less right you, you know it's like it's this fine line between at least I found with me that yeah, therapy can help just when you're, when you're stressed and like help to manage it, but that's yeah. very different than saying like your problem is in your head. And if you were less stressed, you wouldn't be in pain. Those are like two different statements. Exactly. Or like doctors who I, I think it's so important to have doctors not blame everything on your chronic illness too. And listen when things come up to make sure, because with lupus, you do get a lot of uh, comorbidities, right? Like uh, a lot of stuff that comes with it. So to make sure that doctors kind of recognize that and not, it's just your lupus. You know what I mean? Yeah. Kind of diving deeper into what's going on. Absolutely. And how do you manage like school and all of those things? Like, are there any tips? I'm, I'm thinking I have a friend, a friend's daughter who just got diagnosed with an autoimmune disease. And like, they're just, you know, they're in the very early stages of, of how, I mean, academics is hard. Social life is hard. Like, how do you manage it all? Any tips? Any yeah. advice? My tips would be take breaks when you need them you know i and also what's helped me a lot is definitely my iep at school even though teachers sometimes have a hard time like abiding by certain rules it helps just to know that i can have extra time when i need it you know i can take a test in a different room if i need to you know and yeah kind of take it day by day because I know that the early kind of um, stages of an autoimmune condition, personally for me, I dealt with so much fatigue. You know, yeah. even getting to school was a whole like challenge, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so I feel like just taking it day by day and just all you can do is really kind of find your new normal, find what works for you. And that's really important. What works for you? Because what works for me and you might be totally different from what works right. for someone else. Absolutely. You know? And in that IEP, the individual education plan, like what type of accommodations can you ask for? You, yeah. can, you mentioned too, like more time, different room for tests. Like what, I mean, I think, you know, someone who's new to this and like all of a sudden their kid gets diagnosed, they have probably no idea what, 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 yeah, yeah. what type of accommodations help. Um, so I can have extra time on homework or tests. I can take a test in a different room if I need it. Because sometimes I know for me, if I'm in pain and kind of other people around me are like chatting, that makes it really hard for me to like focus on the task at hand. 
So that's, yeah. that's like one of the most helpful accommodations for me. I also can take the elevator when I need it, you know, and that's helpful for a lot of people with the joint issues and muscle issues. Yeah. Um, yeah, those are kind of like the three main things, but also when things come up, like let's say like surgery or procedures, my teachers can also kind of take, well, I've, I've been very lucky to have kind of teachers take off certain assignments while I've been gone off my grade book until I kind of recuperate. And that's with certain teachers, you know? Right, and that's very yeah. helpful. And it, I mean, do all your teachers know? Because I think that would be really important that they all know and that they're kind of- Yeah, they're but all it's also board. important to kind of, it's hard being patient with your teachers because a lot of them don't understand, you know, and that's, you know, and that was kind of hard for me, not getting super frustrated with them, but I just had to, you know, constantly remind them in a nice way, you know, be my own advocate. This is what I need, you know, yeah. and if you're not going to give me what I need, I'm going to fight for it, you know. Yeah. And it's, it's such a shame. And I find that with the autoimmune diseases, it's, it's all the, the, what they call invisible illnesses. It's like if someone is in front of you, like in a wheelchair or blind or something, you know, you, you're, most people are going to just by naturally be sympathetic. But when you, especially, I found that like when people, when you look, they're like, well, you look healthy. And I'm like, well, you know, I put extra makeup on um, or right. Like how I look is not exactly correlated with how I feel. Um, exactly. and I, that's been a lifelong battle with uh, also with friends and family, you know, of being like, well, you look fine, you know, we're just being lazy. So it's like, we already have enough to deal with, with the chronic pain piece. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything, I don't want to use the word positive, but if there is, is there been anything, like you already said, you've learned at a young age, how to advocate for yourself. And that is such an important life skill, like, is there anything else that, that, I mean, is this like influenced your what life in a, I guess maybe a non-negative way? Maybe, you know, maybe what you want to do with your life one day or? So it also with that, I feel like I've learned how to be more vulnerable with people. And I think that's also really important, kind of not hiding what you're going through. And that was a big step in kind of like uh, my mental health. Once I became more vulnerable on my internet, I started to meet more people and kind of communicate with people who know what I'm going through. And that's where I kind of found what I want to do, kind of like my passion. And I definitely want to go into some sort of nursing type job, whether that's like a nurse of anesthesiology, a nurse practitioner, you know, and that's amazing. That's and also online, I've definitely connected with people by sending them free care packages, you know, and oh, tell me a little bit, tell me a little bit more about that. So other people going through chronic health issues, you've sent them. Yeah. yeah. So I have a Google form on my Instagram account and people who go through health conditions kind of fill it out. And I just send them like um, free care packages. And in those packages, it's just like kind of self-care stuff, like lotion. And it's kind of personalized for you, depending on what you're going through. Oh my gosh, that is so nice. Now, I still like, well, I certainly, you know, you don't want anyone to have these the diseases. The fact is, everybody's going to go through something challenging at yeah. some point in their life. And it's, it's really how you how you bounce back and your story shows such like resilience and it really is, you know, giving you a path forward. And, and I think, you know, not only advocate for yourself, but empathy and exactly. influence maybe what you want to do. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, you are just such an inspiration. So I guess I'd like to end it on just if there's, if there's someone who's about to start high school right now, who's got an autoimmune disease or um, just, you know, any sort of words of hope, like any advice for them or anything I forgot to ask you that you want to mention? Yeah, I would just say the biggest thing is just take, take it day by day. Like you never know what um, conditions are so sort of like, you know, crazy. One minute you could be doing completely fine. And then the next minute you can end up in the ER. You know, it's so, you just have to be patient with yourself 
you know, patient with others around you, your friends, family, doctors, teachers, you know, communicate your needs. Yeah, and just kind of what's helped me is just kind of finding a community in which I can express how I'm feeling. Because I noticed when you kind of try to hide it, you know, when I was trying so hard to, you know, conceal my butterfly rash in the morning, I didn't want anyone to see you know, how I looked. I was like self-conscious of my under eye bags because I hadn't slept from pain, you know? Kind of when you don't hide it and when you're just vulnerable and embrace it to the best of your abilities, that's when I notice you truly kind of find your path and kind of find your new normal. That's amazing. I wish I, wish I had met you uh, four years ago when I was starting my most recent health journey because those were the words I needed to hear. Like, take it day by day. My mind was so into like, oh my God, will I ever get better? Like, what's the rest of my life going to be like? And I can't live like this forever. And if I had just met you and just been like, she can do it so much younger than me. I mean, it's just, just such smart words. So, um, thank you. You are absolutely like so inspirational. Is there like a website or anything that you want to share? Like I should like an Instagram or anything. Um, yeah. So my Instagram is called chronically ill clo, you know, and if anyone's watching this and is interested in a care package or just, you know, has lupus or scoliosis and wants to DM me and reach out, you know, that's where you can reach me. That is awesome. Thank you so much, Chloe. You've been such an inspiration to me and I think to, to so many other people as well. So thank you.